Hello. Well, today I'm here to talk about the uh, third installment in the uh, Batman anthology, uh, which is, of course, Batman Forever. Um, yes, uh, first time in the f uh, franchise that uh, Robin shows up, you know, Dick Grayson. Um, um, if you have the Blu-rays or uh, two-disc DVDs, um, which is essentially what uh, has happened, which is what uh, was basically imported here for the um, special features. Um, you'll know f uh, throughout the other, the previous installments, they thought about how inserting Dick Grayson um, into the films before. Um, you know, in the first Batman, you know, have the Joker kill Dick Grayson's parents, essentially. Um, but that didn't happen. Um, try to uh, get... Uh, also put Robin in Batman Returns, but that also clearly didn't happen. Um, and, uh, you know, Chris O'Donnell plays Robin in this film, and... Uh, I know many people have talked about how he does not at all look like he should be uh, living with Bruce Wayne. You know, he's not of the age where he'd be like an orphan and couldn't live on his own. Of course, it's uh, in that aspect of this film is a bit odd, but, you know, uh, wanted to have Robin for a while, and they finally were able to get Robin into this franchise. Um, but, uh, yeah, the... Obviously, this uh, has a shift in tone quite a... Um, you know, in quite a bit um, compared to the first uh, ins two installments. Um, you know... Because of the reaction to Batman Returns, um, Tim Burton wasn't asked to return as the director for the third installment, you know, Batman Forever. Um, though um, he is a producer, though how much involvement as a producer did he have? I don't know. I don't think he had much involvement, uh, if any, outside of early developments of doing a third film uh, prior to and perhaps shortly after the release of uh, Batman Returns. Um, he was in, like, in the development, but because of the, how people reacted to the second film, um, you know, people believed it was a kid's film due to the toys sold at McDonald's when it was rated PG-13, which does not say that's a children's film. It's a, it's a interesting um, a series of events that unfolded that eventually led it to where Burton was, I guess, you could say kicked out of the director's chair and um, they brought Joel Schumacher. Um, of course, you know, he's known for films like Falling Down, and um, The Lost Boys and other films <clears throat> uh, of the sort. Um, he's done some dark films, serious films. Oh, you know, I'm sure uh, on the outset, when one would look at his filmography leading up to Batman Ret or uh, Forever, Joel Schumacher seems like a fine fit, but uh, this, this just did not... Uh, seemed to be for many people. Um, as a kid, I enjoyed this quite a bit, though as I got older, my enjoyment of it uh, faded uh, quite a bit. Um, I don't think it's a horrible movie, um, but it is not great either. It's eh, it's okay, I guess you could, you could say. Um, I guess for me, at least, it's alright, okay. Um, I know there are people who really love this film, um, but for me, it's the tone of this film that is kind of wonky. Um, 
you know, there are serious moments with Bruce Wayne, Batman, um, which is in essentially keeping in tone with the previous installments. But then when it comes to the villains, is that's where the tone shifts. And it is where the response of Batman Returns really comes into play, where uh, it gets quite light. Um, bit campy, perhaps. Uh, you know, Jim Carrey, is he's the Riddler, Edward Nigma. His performance seems to be that of the 60s version of the Riddler, Frank Gorshin's. Um, but I don't think it totally fits with uh, what the tone is supposed to be like, you know. Now, if the film itself was supposed to be just overtly campy and all that, then all right, sure, great. But it's also serious. It, as if any campiness, any of the campiness that exists in this film, uh, is also juxtaposed with a dark, serious tone with the campiness. And so it's not really able to embrace the campiness that the villains come across, uh, bring to it or the seriousness that uh, seems to be following Batman. As well as also. Robin's story to an extent. Um, also, um, regarding Robin, Marlon Wayans was at one point going to be Robin, but it was a situation where he was going to, I think, be in the Batman Returns, but then when they wrote out Robin, and then we're going to say he will be in the third film, his contract, they bought him out of his contract, so they were able to cast somebody else. I don't know how Marlon Wayans would have uh, been as Robin, or Dick Grayson. Um, I know he's more comedic actor. But, you know, uh, who knows? Maybe he would have done a fine job. Uh, Chris O'Donnell does this film. Um, The characterization of Dick Grayson and Bruce Wayne isn't, or Dick Grayson and Robin, isn't really, uh, it isn't really fantastic. I guess he does the best with what he has, but what he has to work with isn't some of the best material. Um, you know, but I think the studio really interfered with this film when it comes to its dark tone. Like, Joel Schumacher clearly wanted to have a dark tone. It's evidence every if you watch any documentaries or featurettes, he seemed to want to have a dark tone. And when you see Bruce Wayne scenes, Batman scenes, it's quite dark. Um, now, while I, I think you could excuse with the Riddler for being goofy, over the top, whatever you want to uh, describe his characterization as, you know, I guess with that character I could fit more. But with Two-Face, played by Tommy Lee Jones, and I didn't mention how uh, in the first Batman uh, of this series, uh, Billy D. Williams was Harvey Dent. Um, not that I did that on purpose, it was just one of those things like I wanted to, there's so much about that film I wanted to talk about in a certain amount of time, not talk for a long time about certain things, you know, you want to try and summarize everything you can within a timely manner, like within 20 minutes or so. Um, um, but, you know, to recap for him, uh, he did a fine job. You know, he didn't have too many scenes, but uh, he was pretty good. He took the role of Harvey Dent because he wanted to be Two-Face in the sequel. Um, when the sequel came to be made, he wasn't there it's that they also like bought out his contract and so uh, they they cast Tommy Lee Jones but Tommy Lee Jones seems to sort of act like the Joker at times um, I know there are people who defend his characterization of the Joker or uh, Two-Face um, now that I've said like the Joker now that's what I'm thinking 
but people do say, you know, oh, he has moments where he's like serious, like Harvey Dent, Two Face. You know, he's split and he flips the coin and he acts accordingly. And yeah, he has moments like that, but then it's juxtaposed with him laughing maniacally and kind of just being a bit goofy, especially when he uh, teams up with the Riddler. Then that's those moments that may have been a bit more frequent in the beginning as the film goes on are a bit lost. So the darkness that he had is now seems to uh, evaporate and disappear. Um, Michael Goff and Pat Hingle return, again, of course, as uh, uh, <clears throat> Alfred and Commissioner Gordon. Commissioner Gordon doesn't have as much to do in this film compared to the first two films, unfortunately. But I mentioned that in the last video. Um, and uh, Nicole Kidman plays uh, Dr. Chase Meridian. She's uh, the new uh, love interest for uh, Bruce Wayne and Batman. Um, you know, she's not bad, but the character is... It, I think if it wasn't played by Nicole Kidman, the character is she plays wouldn't be all that completely memorable um, she's sort of like a damsel in distress at times um, which you know for this kind of this kind of film does that mean that's a bad thing not necessarily um, but I could also see how some might think well, maybe she should have been uh, her part should have been a bit better, bi bigger perhaps. Um, she does a fine job, again, with what she's uh, given to work with, and, and that seems to be a recurring thing with this film. Some of the people in this film don't have a whole lot to work with, um, um, but they make the best with what they have. Joel Schumacher did his best to try and get it, you know, as dark as possible, but because of the response to the previous film, he was forced by the studio to be lighter. Though he has said he regretted that, you know, they wanted him to, uh, like he, he should have fought uh, with the studio to either do it his way or he was gone, but he didn't do that. He should have fought harder. Um, there are many people who wanted to want to see now a cut, uh, the dark version of Batman Forever he added in mind. Um, some of the deleted scenes you can find here are, um, you can see that dark tone, and it, I think it would have been interesting if uh, many of those uh, scenes were in the film. Though, of course, the film would have been probably over, back over two and a half hours. Or so possibly border, bordering three. The film is 121 minutes, so it's two hours and one minute. Um, perhaps give or take the credits. Um, but yeah, it's like a two hour film. Um, another 30 minutes or so. Who knows? Maybe this would have been better with some more dark uh, uh, scenes in it that wasn't necessarily. Um, Some more darker scenes to help juxtapose with the uh, cartoon campiness of this film. And I know I'm kind of uh, stopping and thinking, but this is a film that, you know, after watching again, there are good moments in this film, but then there's moments that are a bit goofy, you know, doesn't really makes sense with the tone that the film was trying to establish early on. Like, that tone seems to be coming and going. It doesn't totally match. Um, Daisuke and Pepu and I, um, who I did a, you know, I had a conversation, um, back in, like, you know, um, that, that January, uh, we talked about Batman films, and what about this film on, um, this is a film that, you know, I don't think it's a bad thing at all, um, or a bad film, but the tone is very inconsistent. 
and that's unfortunate. Because um, I think there is a, a good film here. It's just bogged down by the campiness. Um, like with how Two-Face is, and how sometimes he acts like Two-Face and Harvey Dent, like how he should be in the comics. But then other times he acts like the Joker and goofy and over the top. Which, you know, fits the Riddler in this film, but... Um, I've also heard how, you know, uh, Tommy Lee Jones didn't like Jim Carrey. Um, he, and some have suggested perhaps he tried to outdo Jim Carrey and was a bit over the top on um, In that matter, um, like he wanted to try and outdo him. Um, but uh, I don't, if that's the case, I don't think it really works uh, too well. Um, and of course, the one person I really haven't talked about is Bruce Wayne Batman himself, Val Kilmer. Um, now, Michael Keaton, of course, left the franchise with Tim Burton. However, he has said that he did for a while. Um, you know, if the script was good and if things were going to look like it would be a very good sequel to the previous films he had done, you know, he would do it. You know, he was not against a follow-up to Batman Returns, which, you know, is a good thing, but um, when he read the script, he just thought it wasn't good. And, um, like, his words like, it sucked. Like, the script sucked, and so he passed on it. And, um, we then got um, Val Kilmer, and Val Kilmer, I think, uh, does a fine job. Um, you know, he does the, the, he's a serious Bruce Wayne, and it can be quite dark as Batman. Um, you know, dealing with the whole memories of death of his parents and everything, the symbol of the bat, which in a deleted scene makes... All that makes a bit more sense, and also the title. You know, he says, you know, I'm Batman forever, and just how everything in that deleted scene goes, I think would have worked better if it was in the film. Um, the, the, he does a fine job. He does a very good job. Um, I don't think he's the best who has played Batman Bruce Wayne, but I also think the material... He had to work with wasn't the best. Um, Joel Schumacher should have fought harder to try and get his dark version out there. He didn't. You know, he even admits as such that he should have. But you know, I guess you you learn from that. You learn that should have fought harder and he didn't. Um, the only unfortunate thing with. Uh, you know, Val Kilmer is, he didn't do anything completely special in that. Um, he's totally memorable. He wasn't, like, a very dark, serious, like, Christian Bale. Or, um, or even um, Michael Keaton, to a degree. Um, I mean, he does have some dark and serious moments and scenes, it's just unfortunate that while I'm watching this film and I see he does a, has a very good performance, it's just bogged down by uh, the campiness that uh, happens throughout this film. Um, the tone shifts quite a bit, and so I think that kind of makes it a bit hard for people to uh, be completely like rank Val Kilmer very high on a list of who like who's the best Batman like one's favorite uh, Batman uh, actors um, I think he does a fine job but you know he also wasn't totally memorable um, in that the film had it been darker had they cut out some of the goofiness retained some of the deleted scenes that would have helped the 
film be a lot better than it is. Because the way it is now, you know, it's fine, it's all right. Could have been better. And with when you watch the deleted scenes, it's like, you know, this is, some of this stuff is a lot better than what we ended up with. Some of that stuff should have retained, should have stayed in the film, but, you know, studio wanted more lightness, so some of that dark stuff went. Um, and, uh, you know, he didn't do the sequel to this film, um, be that a good thing or not. Uh, it's up to you, I guess you could make your own judgment on that film. Uh, but this is a movie that, you know, while I enjoyed quite a bit as a kid, as I've gotten older, I don't enjoy it as much. But, you know, it's not a horrible film either. It's a film that, had they put back some of the dark scenes, taken out some of the uh, campy moments um, that don't completely fit with the film, maybe one or a few, maybe a few uh, of the goofy, campy scenes could have been interjected in there with Jim Carrey and, you know, Tommy Lee Jones to perhaps help make it so it's not completely dark and serious. Um, but just some of that stuff just should have also not, uh, should have been cut, should have been in a deleted scene, um, but... You know, at least we're able to see the deleted scenes. Um, I think this is a very good uh, set. Of course, it comes from uh, this. Um, but this is a, you know, this is a film that, uh, if you get this Blu-ray set, um, I think the deleted, or the uh, documentaries and stuff will, uh, I think help give a better appreciation on top of like the deleted scenes. Um, at least I am able to appreciate this film a bit more, um, seeing some of the behind the scenes stuff and what went on and some of the decisions that were made, be it, uh, be Joe Schumacher was for some of those decisions or he wasn't, um, you know, sometimes when a studio wants something done, unless you're able to really fight and convince them, you're going to have their way. And unfortunately, we could have gotten a darker film, a sequel that maybe not have been, wasn't darker than Batman Returns, but could have gotten a darker film. But with what we have now, it's, it's fine. It's okay. It's... Nothing too special. Um, it's not a film that I watch a whole lot, but uh, I, I don't find this a complete write-off either. Um, so with that, <clears throat> uh, that is uh, really my thoughts on this film. Um, uh, next time, of course, I will be... Uh, discussing the final film in this set, in this series. Um, yeah, I have some stuff to talk about with that film. Um, but anyway, I will uh, talk to you all next time. Hope you all have a great day, have a great weekend and a great week. See you all next time.